are currently sitting outside Lost Star Cottage, Kenwood, which was affected by a flash flood. But my question is, do people really know what a flash flood is? Well, flash flooding be has become a concerning issue for local Houstonians and areas nearby. The city of Houston has poor geography features. It has inadequate infrastructure, uh, which causes rainstorms to have the ability to produce tropical storm-like flooding. Now. Flash floods typically occur within a few minutes up to six hours of excessive rainfall. When your nearest dam reaches its full capacity, the excessive water begins to flood the streets. So what really causes a flash flood? It would be, as mentioned earlier, excessive rainfall, saturated soil or dry, so dry soil that is unable to absorb the water completely, as well as human activity that leads to climate change. Houston already has natural factors which contribute to flash flooding. Throughout the years, uh, rising temperatures have added 7% more moisture into the water. This leads to warmer water in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, what does it affect? Most importantly, it affects loss of life, damage to buildings, roadways, canals, as well as a hazard to the water that we're not really aware of that could affect our body. How was I affected? My area usually gets affected by a flash flood every single year. Not just one time, but constantly. Every single time it rains, we get flooded. But for Harvey, that one was the worst one for my area. We only had about three hours to pack up our stuff. We were only able to take about three trash bags. We had to leave the house in a four-wheeler because the water was up to our knees. We remain outside soaking wet for about five hours. Now, for this one, we lost our house, we had to rebuild, and we had to live in a hotel for about three months. And that's with the help from the government. How about those that didn't receive any help from the government? How long were they stranded outside without a home? As for me, the people in my area and myself were impacted not really by materialistic things, but it was more as a resources thing. Uh, many people, including ourselves, lost cattle, chicken, sheep, goats, hay pastures. And these people that invest their life creating this stuff. They invest resources, they invest their money and time. Therefore, uh, people didn't just lose, okay, you lost your cattle. You lost the previous work you already invested in your cattle. And this is why flash floodings don't just affect the areas nearby they they actually it's like a chain reaction which uh this leads to now according to kevin blackstone we have spent about 449 million dollars on a stadium and 193 million dollars came from the public so was the stadium really necessary did we really have to update the stadium how come we haven't updated a 70 year old dam that could probably not prevent a flash flood but minimize the effects mm -hmm. like come on like we can't be spending so much money on a stadium that we probably don't need when we can't even get enough funding for education that actually needs it so what are we really doing with that and according to Mark Mulligan, throughout the nation, federal government pays out an average of 3,000 per square mile. And Houston pays 500,000 per square mile. This just shows like a big gap that there's something going on. We're wasting either too much money here and not enough here. But the point is that we're not doing anything to prevent or minimize the chances of flash flooding. And uh, like she mentioned, the money um, invested in flash flooding it can be used somewhere else that the city of Houston actually needs like education, railroads, tollways, uh, streets, homeless people, there's dams, there's canals and we need to use this money to prevent the floods not just aiding them and well that being said I hope y'all learned something the same way we'd learned something by doing this research and I hope y'all enjoyed this video